If you're looking to cut joinery by hand, whether on parts dimensioned and cut to length by machines, or if you're looking to cut the cord all together, some hand saws are definitely on your shopping list. But there's many different types and purposes. Crosscut, rip cut, panel, dovetail, carcass, tenon saws, and Japanese and Western. So which saws are right for you? Well, Highland Woodworking has you covered with many different types of saws for every level of need. So let's jump in and take a deeper look at hand saws. When you think of a handsaw, you might picture an old tool from your grandparents' tool shed, and you might have even tried one with varying results. These handsaws are the workhorse for rough dimensioning, that is, cutting a board to length, or cross-cutting, across the grain, and to width by ripping, along or parallel to the grain. These saws are 26 inches in length, or their shorter version in 16 to 24 inches are called panel saws, and have their teeth filed in either cross-cut or rip. That's right, the teeth are filed differently for different purposes. Without going into too much detail, cross-cut teeth are filed at an angle, much like a knife edge, whereas rib teeth are filed with a straight edge, much like a chisel. Using the appropriate tooth filing for the appropriate cut will result in a much cleaner and more efficient cut. Hand saws and panel saws can have as many as 4 to 10 points per inch, or PPI. Or is it teeth per inch, or TPI? And what's the difference? Well, points per inch measures the distance between the teeth from point to point, whereas teeth per inch measures the distance from tooth to tooth between the gullets. So there isn't really that much of a difference, except teeth per inch will be one less than points per inch measured on the same saw. What really matters about points per inch, however you measure it, is the lower the number, the more aggressive the cut will be. There are plenty of semantics and particulars about how many teeth for materials of different thicknesses, but for the sake of this video, a 6 to 8 point per inch is fairly standard range for a rip cutting panel saw, and a 6 to 10 points per inch is a fairly standard range for a cross cutting panel saw. Another distinction on teeth is that all the saws in this video are western saws, and western saws have the teeth oriented such that they cut on the push stroke as the saw is going away from you. Another family of saws called Japanese saws have the teeth oriented such that they cut on the pull stroke as the saw is coming towards you. Click the link to see our video on Japanese saws. Now that we know about teeth, what if you want to cut some fine joinery, dovetails, and tenons? You need a dovetail saw and a tenon saw, right? And what exactly is a back saw anyway? Well, back saws get their name from the folded back along the spine of the plate of the saw that's there to stiffen and hold it straight. Some modern manufacturers actually make a back that is integral and non-removable that serves the same purpose but passes on savings in manufacturing to you. The drawback to a saw with an integral back is that if your plate should develop a curve or a kink, you can't adjust it with this type of back where you can with a traditional folded back. These backs can be made out of brass or steel with brass being the more traditional and steel being a more affordable option. Back saws are referred to by different names, which ultimately refer to the size of the saw in both length and depth of plate. And those names do align with their general purpose, but that doesn't mean one can't do the job of another. From smallest to largest, these sizes are the dovetail, carcass, and tenon saws. Dovetail saws are of the shortest length, the thinnest plate, and range from 14 to 18 points per inch. These make fine, narrow cuts and have a shallow and short plate for the small depth of cut required for dovetails. These are filed for rip cuts generally. However, there is one other relatively new tooth geometry referred to as hybrid, which performs both rip and cross cuts very well with minimal sacrifices to overall efficiency. A hybrid filed dovetail saw allows for enhanced performance on the cross cut on the half pin shoulder while maintaining rip performance on the main cuts. The carcass saw is 10 to 14 inches in length with around 12 points per inch and minimally thicker plate than a dovetail saw. The carcass saw gets its name from its overall usefulness for all around work on the carcass or skeleton of a piece of furniture. This is a great overall saw that can be used for multiple functions. Next up in size is the tenon saw. The tenon saw gets its name from, you guessed it, the tenon. They excel at cutting the rips for the cheeks of tenons and as such have a deeper and thicker plate with around 10 points per inch. Tenons can be of varying lengths, with some being quite deep. 
Obviously, the depth of plate under the back limits the depth of cut, so the tenon saw offers the greatest depth for its intended purpose. The modern age of saw making has brought us more than just the hybrid tooth. There's also hybrid saws, like this Bad Axe hybrid dovetail and small tenon saw. When you're first starting out, it might not be practical to have dedicated saws for rip and crosscut for dovetails and tenons. A saw like this will cut average length tenons and dovetails just fine. And with the hybrid tooth, you're set up for both rip and crosscut. In my opinion, if you're first buying saws and you're trying to get the most bang for your buck, a hybrid dovetail and small tenon saw like this paired with a tenon saw with a hybrid tooth will cover all your bases and you can add to your arsenal as you see fit. Well, that's the basic rundown of Western saws. If you'd like to know more about Japanese saws, check out the video on the link and don't forget to check out the whole line of saws, both Japanese and Western, at highlandwoodworking.com.